Do not let these folks try to gaslight you and make it seem as though this is Black Boy Joy. This is definitely a new version of Minstrel Show. And I think we really need to just call it that. Y'all know what time it is. I got the Black Bee Lick on. What's going on, you all? We've all seen the clips. We've been seeing him for a minute. He's been making us uncomfortable. And now he's teamed up with Chicken Boy. And let me tell you something. It is the traveling circus at this point. Now, when Gorilla Boy was first introduced, when he first came out on TikTok, a lot of folks didn't want to call it that. They did not want to say what it was. It was like, hey, you know, he's just a dark-skinned, muscular guy. Uh, just enjoying himself, just dancing and stuff. But some people knew, some people, because we always have that inner, like, girl, I don't know, that discernment be jumping out. It definitely jumped out for me, and I picked it up, and I was just like, hey, I know that there's no issue with a black person dancing and enjoying themselves and, you know, doing pranks. Everybody does it, but it's very specific in how he is doing this type of content, and I'm just not here for it. So now he's he's garnered a huge following. A lot of white people have been enjoying his content. A lot of white folks have seen him in restaurants. They reacted to it. They love this type of stuff. They loved it. It went so far as he even changed his name, like, because he was calling himself Gorilla Boy. He was calling himself Gorilla Boy, and, you know, folks was like, girl, no, like, call yourself something else, call yourself something else. So he eventually changed it. Um, I think, he, what was it, what was it, the Dance of Harambe or something is what he was first calling himself, Dance of Harambe. I don't know what he's calling himself now. I don't even, I try not to look at it because every time I see it, my credit go down 20 points. Every time I see it, it just takes me back. Like, I'm just like, girl, I can't watch the Jim Crow content. I just cannot get into it. And now we've seen, like, what it has truly become. There's a video of him dancing in a Curious George outfit. Like, this content is not new. It's been going on, as far as, like, digital content like this has been happening for a minute. You used to have King Bach used to do Vine videos. Um, it used to play up, like, stereotypes of black folks and stuff with white people. Just, like, pranks and silly stuff. And it was very specific. And he, he grew a big audience off of that type of content because a lot of white people was watching it. And white people have been watching content like this since the 1800s when it's like when it was first coming out like when it was first like a part of like the culture of going on like tours and going on like traveling circus like performing this type of stuff for white crowds and stuff like white people dressing up in blackface and white lips and just doing all type of red lips just doing all types of stereotypical blackface stuff like it's been happening so now we're in this digital age where we see this content and we're just like okay Maybe people have learned from it. People know, but it's like, no, some folks ain't really learned from it. A lot of folks don't think it's nothing wrong with it because we have someone calling themselves the dancing Harambe, like literally calling themselves a gorilla, putting on, you know, like gorilla outfits and dancing, break dancing around white folks eating chicken. Like it has gotten so bad. And I think some people were trying to be cautious, overly ca cautious. And just like, hey, I don't want to call him that because maybe this is black boy joy. Maybe this dancing black boy is just enjoying himself, dancing around people and this. And then now we're looking at it just like, you know what? This ain't what it seems to be like. Now we have this video of both of them, Chicken Boy and um, the other guy, uh, like dancing. And like at this restaurant, you see nothing but white people in the background, a uh, bunch of non-black folks. And like they're dancing, like eating chicken and all, it's just, hey, as a person who literally just had lemon pepper wings last night, as someone who grew up eating watermelons in the summertime, sprinkling some salt on them, like for whatever reason, just because like black folks do eat chicken, black folks do eat watermelon, a lot of people eat chicken, a lot of black folks have introduced other folks to eating chicken and frying chicken and taught other folks how to fry chicken well. like. This is like like a thing, like it's nothing wrong, like people eat chicken, that's fine. But we're often seeing things that were made fun of, things that we've done, you know, 
dissected and made fun of. Now other cultures are starting to do it. Other people are starting to do it. The whole thing about oxtails. Like, folks thought it was disgusting. Like, oh my gosh, now it's like a delicacy. Now oxtail, the price of oxtails have went up. Now it's like, you have white people eating oxtails now. Like, buying it up, you know, going to restaurants to get them some oxtail. But at one point, it was looked at low class, like you don't do any of that. So, I get that black folks do do some stuff. So it's nothing wrong with a black person like eating chicken or eating watermelon. But what happens is when you start to build an audience off of dancing and repurposing and repackaging this imagery of minstrel show to be like, oh, like I'm just dancing and eating chicken. Yes, like we have videos of toddlers eating chicken wings and dancing and, 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 and having fun. And that imagery is not the same because of the audience and it being authentic. But when you are taking a camera and you are setting up content to be at this restaurant and you just all of a sudden dancing for white folks and you have chicken in your hand, yes, girl, you are playing a gorilla and a monkey for white folks. You are doing minstrel show. You are doing blackface. You are performing stereotypical stuff for white entertainment. Like, that has happened. Like, you're not the first person to do it. Now, when you type in Gorilla Boy dancing, you see this dark-skinned guy, like, on TikTok, like, dancing around. Like, you just... It's the same stuff over and over. And it's just... It's time to, like... It's, it's time to stop. And what's funny about content and stuff like this is... Every time a content creator does this specific type of content, they have a lot of white friends. They're surrounded around like non-black folks, like a lot of times. Like when you go back and you look at the content that Todrick Hall did, um, him making fun of like, you know, Cinderella and the seven ghetto dwarfs and all the other stuff like Cinderella in the hood, um, Princess Keisha, and all the other stuff. Like, Todd Hall has nothing but white people, like, friending white people. He's surrounded by white folks. King Bach, when he was doing this content, had a lot of white friends. Like, y'all know what y'all are playing up. Like, y'all are having conversations with these, like, white people. And I know y'all are inherently anti-black. Like, I know y'all are, because anti-blackness is everywhere. Like, you can do your best and anti-blackness will show up. So I, I don't trust a black person who makes sure to surround themselves with nothing but white people who is performing content like this. Like, you don't know the history. You don't know the imagery. Like, even when we're seeing, like, even when we're seeing fashion houses, you know, redo certain stuff, it's just like, hey, like, this is a noose in your stuff. Like, I don't know what y'all are trying to do, but we ain't doing this. Like, even we're seeing them do, like, blackface and black dolls and stuff with red lips. Like, hey, that imagery shows up because our ancestors saw stuff like this. And you know what? Every time I've seen the no trespassing sign, I've always, like, I couldn't explain why I was, like, uncomfortable, like, seeing it. Just not because you can't trespass, but it's just, like, this image is just jarring. A lot of black people are holding like centuries of like things in their DNA. Like we are holding like the DNA of our ancestors who were enslaved in our DNA. Like that stuff has been passed down to us. So there's some stuff that we're gonna see that we don't understand why we're reacting to it. It's the same way where you, if you see certain stuff with your eyes, like you see something that, uh, like you're disgusted by the smell of something, that's our bodies being taught, hey, that you're disgusted by that smell because it can get you sick and you don't need to be around that. Or seeing some holes on food makes people uncomfortable because it's just like our bodies have been programmed to, hey, you know, we don't need to be eating that because it's moldy, it's gonna make us sick. Like that is in our DNA. So when we see things like this, that stuff is in our DNA. That's why we can't explain why, 
but we just know it's not right. And I feel like some of us were being overly cautious because we did not want to put this imagery on this dark skin buff individual and say, hey, like he is like, this is, I don't know. Because we want black men to be able to enjoy themselves. We want black men to be able to dance in the club and it's like be fun. But when you're out here like performing this, like it's just a coincidence that you just so happen to be in a Curious George outfit. There's just so, so like so happen to be a video you like eating watermelon. And that's like one of your most viral videos. Come on now. Come on now, don't play me. Don't, and y'all are gaslighting us. We even have celebrities like Cardi B coming out and saying, oh, it's nothing wrong with it. It's no, it's, it's no different than what, um, you know, Mr. Beast was doing. First of all, girl, F Mr. Beast. There's already been several videos made debunking and having a conversation about why the things that Mr. Beast does is not right. Anyone that's making content and making profit off of, like, performing stuff for poor people um, and putting the camera, like he literally started doing videos in the very beginning of his career, recording himself, giving money to homeless people. There's no way, shape or form that you should be recording someone with or without their consent to make money off of it. If you're gonna give poor people money, if you're gonna give poor folks some like services and stuff that they're needed, that they need, do not put a camera in front of their face. Like y'all are doing that to make revenue. And even if you are taking that revenue and, and investing and giving more, you are building a following and a brand off of it. I don't know how many times, but say, if a person is like philanthropy should not be a thing. Should no one be making money and making a following off of servicing people? It should not be. I don't know why, like that's hard for people to understand because people want to believe that folks are good, but people are good at making money. And they're good at making money off of poor people. They've been doing it for a minute, it's called capitalism. So going back to seeing Big Groove is his name, he was calling himself the Grooving Gorilla. He was dancing in a gorilla costume. Now you have him teaming up with Chicken Boy, these two black content creators who are doing the same, same type of content, dancing in a restaurant with non-black folks. I'm sitting next to him right now, seeing him sit next to this black person, and you have all these non-black folks behind him, like watching him dance and stuff, and it's just, you know, it's, it seems like it's harmless, but it's very much harming. Like, and I don't think that Big Groove is going to set us back a hundred years or whatever. But what happens is white folks consume this content. They making money off of it. He's getting brand deals and stuff off of it. And it's just like, there are black content creators who are out here doing other things that are just as entertaining, way more entertaining, that will not be looked at. There's a very specific thing that happens with black content creators. Black content creators already struggle like with their white counterparts and getting you know brand deals and all types of stuff. So a lot, unfortunately, as someone who's been doing this 10 plus years, I've seen the history of black content creators having to do stuff like this to get attention from white audiences. We even saw that with Glozell. Glozell, to me, honestly, was doing a lot of the same stuff. Like she like, always, somehow her wig would be missing or she would be making fun of her hair or she would be wearing green lipstick and stuff. She would just always be performing like this overt blackness or something or this goofy style comedy around her blackness. And she had a big white audience. Like a lot of big YouTubers, like group, like that was the content they were putting out. Like they, like white folks love, they were consuming it. Like they was just like, oh, this is like entertaining. They didn't think anything was wrong with it. And like I said, they didn't think, they don't think anything is wrong with it because their forefathers who were sitting here watching that type of content too. If white people are watching your content like this, Seven times out of 10, it's something wrong. Like, I'm just gonna name it. I, I just can't name too many people who have a big white audience in black who are doing like 
content or anything that is not somewhat problematic. It, like, it is easy for me to spot. I just can't name too many folks. Oh yes, going back from the beginning of what I said, do not allow these people to gaslight you and say that this is Black Boy Joy. This is not Black Boy Joy, this is Minstrel Show. Him and Chicken Boy are performing stereotypes for white audiences to get a laugh out of. And we've been talking about stuff like this for a minute. And I don't need any celebrity who doesn't understand things um, and the basics of pop culture to tell me what isn't and what is a problem. Like I can do their history. Like you all get on here and y'all try to tell us black folks what is and what isn't wrong. There's a website called blackface.com slash minstrel shows that literally talks about the history of minstrel shows. And if you look at this type of stuff, you understand minstrel show, you will be able to understand and grasp that there is nothing funny about this content, period.